Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Today I want to show you how to make a couple of journal cards. I'll give you a quick peek at them. We're going to do some rubber stamping and use some stencils. Hey, if you're watching this video, do give me a thumbs up if you like it. Share it with your friends so others might find us as well and come hang out with us. You know, I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I make a junk journal live. On Thursdays, I have live premieres. This is a recorded video that was much longer. I try to shrink it down and I try to share some cool techniques, fun ideas for making junk journals and journals in general. So here's what I've got. I've got some rubber stamps. I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist, stencils, a book page, and we're going to make a background page that we can use for the front of our card. I've got a Christmas berry from a Christmas Dream Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist set and I have one of the stencils from the Stencil Club November 2020. So what we're going to do is get my spray box out. So first what I'm going to do is I want to spray this so that it is red. You know, if you've got book pages and you're trying to figure out creative ways to change the colors, you of course can dye them like with tea and coffee, but you can also use Tattered Angels. And here's what you want to do. Tattered Angels has mica, so you want to make sure that you shake this. Generally, I try to do a side-to-side -side motion to kind of get this swirling around. Because if you start pumping on the sprayer without sh shaking it up, it'll just suck up the mica and then it will clog the sprayer so definitely make sure that you shake it so now i'm going to take this and spray all over i'm going to use my heat tool to dry this so that i've got a nice dry piece of paper and i've put a lot of tattered angels on here because i really want to saturate it now if you're finding that some of the areas aren't as dark as you would like but there's plenty of tattered angels on there grab a paintbrush that's what i'll do I've got a little paintbrush and I'll just kind of help move it around. This is going to be a background, so I'm not really worried about how smooth it is. But I'm going to go ahead and just use my paintbrush to kind of help get that color fully saturated on my page. All right, so I'll just put my paintbrush in some water and let that clean out. And then let's dry this with a heat tool. So you want to make sure that your book page that you spray with Tattered Angels is very dry before we move on to our next element that we're going to add. So I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of rub over this real fast. I don't see any wet coming up and I think it's fairly dry. I'm going to lay the stencil over the top of my whole page here and I'm going to grab some washi tape to help hold it in place. Then I've got a Versamark ink pad. So this is where I have more than one Versamark pad. So I'll show you the difference. So this is what I call my clean pad. It should be somewhat clear. And then this is my dirty pad. So that's where I have smooshed it onto a, a stamp that had ink on it. And so it transferred. Well, for this technique, I really don't care what color the ink is because I'm going to put gold glitter embossing powder on top. I just need this to be nice and juicy. I do recommend that you get the re-inkers for your ink pad so that you can re-ink them. I've re-inked mine here recently. So now what I'm going to do is take this and smush it to the stencil. And I'm just kind of coming down the line so I know I get good coverage and I'm just going to come over and then go back up and then come over and I'll just kind of go over a couple of times making sure that I really press through that stencil all right and I'll close this up remove the washi tape let's move the stencil out of the way so now that I've got that embossing ink on there I'm grabbing my embossing powder I have it in a little oh rubbermaid type container and we're going to sprinkle the embossing powder. You see where it sticks to the embossed image or the image that's got the ink? This is a great way to make your own custom papers. All right, so I've got embossing powder over the whole thing. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and clean up the spilled embossing powder on my desk. Embossing powder everywhere. All right, so I have laid this on a metal cooking tray. You could use a glass tray. You could use a piece of cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil. And the reason being is because I have a plastic mat and I don't want to heat the embossing powder on my plastic mat. So I'm going to use this pan. Now the pan will get hot. So 
you may want to hold it in a way that you don't have your fingers on it. I'm just going to grab my heat tool and then come in here and heat this up. If you're going to use a lot of embossing powder for a period of time, I do recommend that you wear what's called like a respirator mask so that it will prevent those little bitty particles from going up your nose and in your mouth doesn't matter what brand embossing powder it is because in my opinion it's just little bitty particles that you don't need to be breathing and definitely don't have your face over your project that you're heat embossing so as you can see it's gonna start melting you'll see it start taking a, a different color to it a different shimmer to it it'll go from a dull to a shiny depending on the kind of embossing powder that you have so I'm just gonna keep heating this up until the whole thing is done and then we will go on to the next step all right, so the embossing has been heated up. You can see that it's nice and sparkly. There may be some loose glitter on here, so we can wipe that away here in just a moment. But we want to make sure this is cool before we touch it because embossing powder does get hot. It can't burn. So I'm going to lift this off, and then let's get our paper trimmer out, and I'll trim this. So I know that I want to mat this onto a piece of five and a half by four and a quarter inch cardstock so looking at this let me see what i want to do size wise is i think i want to trim this down to be eight and a quarter inches so i'm just kind of looking at this to side i think i'm going to go ahead and cut off the holes here and that makes it eight inches so it'll be a little bit smaller that's okay and I'm going to cut off this edge here and let's cut off this edge over here. I'm going to do about five, not quite five and a quarter inches, almost in half. And then I'll cut these two pieces in half. So sometimes I just cheat and crease it with my fingers so I know where I want to cut it. And I'll just place this on my paper cutter. All right, so now I've got these four pieces. So what I'll do is apply some Distress Ink. I'm using Walnut Stain all the way around the edges. I'll go ahead and glue these down. I'll just use Aline's Tacky Glue. I am going to go to the sewing machine here in just a moment. So I'll just glue this where it's in the center, glued down. And don't worry about putting glue too far out to the edges. Now, if you're not going to sew, then you want to make sure you have those edges adhered down so that they don't lift whenever you're taking your card in and out of your journal. I'm just putting it as best as I can in the center of my green card. And I'll set this aside to dry for a moment, and then we'll go to the sewing machine. While I'm waiting on the glue to dry, I'm going to stamp a couple of images that I want to use on my cards. And one of those is Emma, Emma's Toy, I think is what it's called. It's got a little Santa, and I've got some archival ink and jet black. So I'm going to stamp this twice on here. And while I've got my ink out, I've got the word Christmas. I think this is from the Christmas Quartet. There's four different Christmas-like sayings. And then I've got a piece of craft cardstock. I'll stamp that on here. And we'll do it twice. So I'll have that ready. And then I've got Happy Christmas. So I'll stamp that out again onto another piece of this craft cardstock. And this says Happy Christmas. I have this um, holly swag, so it's holly leaves with little berries in the middle, and I want to stamp that up here twice. Now we've got all those images ready to go. So now what I want to do is I want to color this in just a little bit so that it's not just stark white. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush. Got a paintbrush here. I'm going to grab the holly leaf from the Christmas Dream Tattered Angels kit and make sure I shake it really well. I'll dip my paintbrush into the Tattered Angels, kind of get off the excess, and then we're going to paint this. Let me zoom in just a little bit. All right, so I've got 
my little paintbrush here and I'm just going to come in here and loosely, I call this watercolor painting, but with tattered angels. I am going to fussy cut this out, so I'm not really worried if I go outside the lines. And I'm just going to re dip into my bottle as I need it. Okay, I'm going to clean my paintbrush off, close the tattered angels. I always keep a hold of it. And I'll grab the, let's see, let's grab the red that we had already. So the Christmas berry. I'm going to shake that up. Make sure that my paintbrush is clean. And I'll grab some of this on my paintbrush and just basically go in where the little holly berries are. All right. And then let's fussy cut these out. So I'll just come in here and use my scissors to quickly fussy cut these out. I like these Fisker scissors because they're spring loaded and I don't have to put my fingers into those little hoops and get those marks on my hands from holding the scissors too tight. And I rotate my paper as I'm cutting. So I fussy cut that out. And I'll fussy cut one of the snowmen or the Emma's toys out. I'll fussy cut these out later to make a second card, but I want these pieces right now. I'm going to add some distress ink to them. So I'm just using my blending tool to go over the edges, which kind of fills in those white spaces. And I kind of like taking the tip of it and just kind of rubbing it on top of my image. So you see how that fills that in. So it doesn't show all that white space. And then on this guy, I'm just going to go right around the edge and kind of angle it. So it comes into the image a little bit. And I need to trim these. So I'm going to trim them real fast. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine. One more thing that I want to do to this while I'm going to be sewing is I want to add some tulip dimensional glitter paint. So I buy the glitter paint. And then this one I think is like crystal sparkle. It's clear and I like it because I can use it over any color and get some sparkle and shimmer. Now, if I want to be very prominent with my little holly berry dots, I could just go in here and only put it on that area. And this bottle is almost empty, but I'm going to just smear this over the whole image. I got a little too much. so I'm just going to wipe my finger off and I'm just spreading it around with my finger. And that'll make this very sparkly. So we'll let that dry. And then let's head over to the sewing machine to sew our cards. So here's our sewing cam alert. We, when we do the live stream, we have this little uh, rainbow lamb that reminds us that we're doing that. <laughs> All right. So I've got a standard sewing machine. I've got a standard needle. I've got standard thread. And I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. So I will usually start up in the corner and then work my way around. When I get to the edge, I'll leave my needle down, raise my presser foot, and then rotate my paper, and then start stitching again. So there's the half sheet with the poinsettias, and then let's do the other side. And there's the other one. All right, so now I have my foundation pieces ready to go. Now, know that you can turn these into a folded greeting card. You could use these as an element to put on the front of your journal cover. So it just kind of depends on what you want to do with them. What we're going to do is take this particular piece and Emma's toys, and we're going to center her, center Santa on here at the top. So I'll just glue that down with Aline's tacky glue. And then I have the Christmas, and let's put that on here at the bottom. And I'll put a block on there if I need to, to help smoosh that down. Okay, for this one, I want to use my little glitter piece that I made. And I think it's a little damp still, so I'm going to use my heat tool to dry it real fast. So on this one, I want to put the Happy Christmas up here and then put the Holly Swag kind of draped over it. So I'm just positioning this about where I think I want it to be. And then we'll place this right on top. So here is the first card that we made and I have enough supplies stamped and ready to go that I can make two of these out of that one sheet of paper that we put the tattered angels on and then use the gold glitter embossing powder. Love how that looks. And then here is the second one. 
that says happy Christmas. And I left this bottom part open. You know, you may have a photograph that you want to put there, or you may want to attach another piece of paper that you write on or leave it like it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed a quick tutorial on using tattered angels and stencils and rubber stamps to make a journal card or a Christmas card for this Christmas season. If you like this video, again, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do check the description box below for a link to my blog as well as the products that I use. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m., we have a live premiere. So you can chat with me while we watch a recorded video. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Bye.